Hi, I'm Audra, back on another episode of The Future of Horeca, a web series in collaboration with FHJ Horeca Showcase. In the previous episode, we saw how Sophie the robot helped Orange Clothes uh, improve its operational efficiencies by producing a bowl of laksa in just 45 seconds. We also saw the appliance giant Electrolux help chefs improve their cooking process. In today's final episode, we're going to be meeting two leading hotels here in Singapore and we're going to explore how they're improving their sustainability efforts. We're going to see how these guys are stepping up their efforts to reduce their carbon footprint and become more environmentally friendly. So I'm here at the Fairmont Singapore and the Swiss Hotel de Stampton. Uh, here with Marcus Hanna, the general manager for both hotels, and we're going to have a little chat about some of the ways uh, the hotels delving into growing their own produce. Marcus, tell us all about you know what's going on in this hotel. I mean, I hear you've got aquaponics right in the mix of upstairs. Uh, yeah, well, we're here on level seventy yes. um, of the Swiss Hotel, yeah. um, but we do have an aquaponics farm yeah. which we've put in on level five of the hotel. Okay, uh, it's four hundred and fifty square meters. Uh, we have about twenty over twenty different varieties of vegetables and two varieties of fish at the moment. Right. Um, and out of that uh, farm, we will achieve thirty percent of our vegetable needs for the hotel. Okay and about 10% of our fish needs for the hotel. No way. Absolutely. Wow. Now, I hear you were champion in this. Well, I'm kind of what um, pushed you on to kind of create this, 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 this solution? Yeah, it's a good question. I was actually at a friend's house here in Singapore uh, at a dinner party and in his uh, living room, he had a hydroponics tower. Oh, wow. And I looked at it and think, my God, why, why couldn't we have something like this in the hotel? Because him and his family could not keep up with the volume of lettuce that was being produced. Right. So when I came back to the hotel, I spoke to Ahmed Dusoki, our uh, area director of uh, innovation and IT. And I said, Ahmed, um, you know, I want you to look into hydroponics. So um, Ahmed went away, looked in it and came back and said, no, no, we're not doing hydroponics, we're doing aquaponics. And I said, great. And once he showed me what aquaponics was, I you thought, this sold. is incredible. And yeah. I, was, I was sold, absolutely. And so it's essentially aquaponics is a combination of using your aquaculture and your hydroponics two in one. Correct. And it's a, it's a self-feeding uh, kind of system, really, isn't it? Yeah, ab absolutely. So the way it works is we, so we have fish and we have vegetables. Mm -hmm. The fish create waste. Mm -hmm. That waste turns into nitrates. Uh, that then goes in and acts as a fertilizer to the garden. Mm -hmm. Then the, the vegetables clean that water, then it goes back through a filter and back into the fish. So it's, it's an integrated system. Uh, there's no, um, uh, no chemicals used. There's no pesticides used because we've used chemicals or pesticides will kill the fish. We don't have to water the garden. So from a sustainability point of view, it's, it's a fantastic option. And you think if we're bringing, if, if it's producing 30% of our vegetable needs for the hotel, you think of how much plastic that is that we're, we're not bringing into the hotel. You think of the carbon footprint, especially being here in Singapore, mm -hmm. when over 90% of produce in Singapore is imported, right. uh, it's, it's hugely re reducing our carbon footprint. Yeah, and um, so when you get to a point where the, the hotel will be fully sustainable in, in say, green vegetables? Uh, <clears throat> look, our goal is we should, we should be able to be fully sustainable in green vegetables. Um, and we, we do have some other areas around the hotel where we can implement something very similar. Okay. Um, so it's, you know, we're very much in line with the Singapore government's 2030 plan right. um, to uh, ensure that Singapore can produce at least 30% of its uh, nutritional needs in Singapore. Okay. Uh, so we're very much aligned with, with that. That's fantastic. Are you finding that people are, your guests for instance, are, um, do they understand what you're doing and um, be verbal about the approach? Look, absolutely. Those, those that we have seen it and, uh, and um, uh, we've talked about it, they're like, wow, it's, in, it's incredible. And, you know, to think that we can do farm to table in 20 minutes in the heart, heart of Singapore, uh, I'm not sure, not sure of too many other hotels or even restaurants around the world that could do that within yeah. the heart of a CBD. Yeah, exactly. So if you ever run out of anything, someone just has to go down to level five and, and cut a little bit of That's it. Or Correct. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what, it's actually great for the chefs, you know, because yeah. it gets the chefs out of the kitchen, yes. well, you know, to go down to harvest and, and, you know, and from the time we plant the seed uh, to the time we harvest, mm -hmm. depending on the type of vegetable, it's three to four weeks and we can do it all year round. Wow. 
that's amazing. So tell me, do you, do you know how, how many varieties of sort of vegetables you have and birds? Mm -hmm. well, we have over 20 different varieties of vegetables, uh, things from um, cos lettuce yep. uh, to um, mizuna, uh, roman lettuce, uh, we have different types of mint, um, different types of uh, herbs. Uh, we're, we're expanding now on tomatoes. We've got these beautiful Roman tomatoes that are, that are coming Roman up. Tomatoes. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that, and we're expanding with some fruits as well. So, you know, there's, it's still in its early stages, yeah. but we're, we're still, you know, experimenting to see what else we can, can, can put into the garden. So you've got a basket for us today, haven't you? Absolutely. I'm going to have a look at this, and um, this is straight out of the garden today, presumably. This, this is yeah. brand new, straight out of the garden. So you've got a lot of living lettuce this year, and you know, uh -huh. I'm just feeling it. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, I cook, so yeah. I know it, it feels fresh, it's crunchy, it's, and you can sure. throw it. Right? Yeah, I mean, you taste that kale, I mean, that's the best kale I've ever, ever tasted, and it is, it, like you said, it's so, so fresh. I am going to taste it. Yeah, go for it. Um, and and things like the edible flowers, you know, they're so expensive for us to buy in, and, you know, we use a lot of them in, um, in Jar, in our one Michelin star restaurant. Um, and so from a cost perspective, we can reduce, actually reduce our costs yeah. by, by um, this garden as well. And I like that, you know, you can actually um, kind of um, experiment with edible flowers. And again, you know, often these, when you buy these, these flowers, they come in little punnets, plastic punnets. Correct, that's right. And half the time they're wilted in. Yes, um, correct. So that's fantastic. So yeah. no more plastic punnets. No more plastic punnets. Um, we have also two types of fish um, in, on the farm, uh, red tilapia and jade perch. And our goal is in a restaurant like this and up here in Skye, um, that we would like to have a one dish that fully comes from our farm. Wow. So one totally sustainable aquaponics dish uh, that we can promote up here in Sky and offer our guests. Oh, I think people would be thrilled to dine on that. Yeah, absolutely, I think so. And is there, was there a decision to pick, select these two particular <coughs> types of fish? Uh, well, the reason we took red tilapia is it's a it's quite a hardy fish, yeah. and um, you know in the beginning, you know that's what was recommended by the supplier to to start with. So we did. Um, you know, we'll, we'll try other fish as well, but uh, that's working really well. The jade perch we've put in is uh, is doing exceptionally well as well. Um, and, and then we'll see, you know, we can do things like barramundi uh, wow. and, and, and others. So it's, uh, it all depends on, you know, what we feel like, what the chef wants. That's my favorite fish. So, yeah. um, that's fantastic. And it's, um, how are you finding are the, are the, are the team sort of embracing it? You know, from, you know, um, young chefs, mm -hmm. all the way, obviously, the, your, your head chefs and all that aren't quite into it, yes. excited about it. Yeah. I kind of feel like this whole experience is great to educate that whole industry as well from, from the young ones. Absolutely, and, and, and we feel that you know that's, that's something that's very important to us. So uh, we, will, we will do educational tours to, to schools, to culinary schools, to bring them in to, to, to show them what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. Because we think you know, sustainability is such a big thing now. And, and with um, the way, you know, if you take Australia, for example, the lack of water, uh, you know, if you can have a sustainable solution, um, then, then that's, that's the way of the future. So the chefs that do go up there, they, they absolutely love it. They, they really do enjoy it. And, then, and most people, you know, everyone that goes in there is like, wow. That, you know, because it's hard to believe that you can have a 450 square meter farm in the middle of the city. Yeah, that's fantastic. And I suppose that being at a place like Singapore where we, we don't really have a lot of our own countries anymore. From, mm -hmm. You know, back in the 70s, we used to be able to yes. Uh, go pick your own eggs or grow your own veggie gardens and stuff like that. But that's that all that land's been cleared for a building and growing population. Correct. Um, so a lot, a lot of that sort of knowledge is lacking. So young chefs are not being educated about. Mm -hmm. They can actually see things grow. Admittedly, a slightly different environment, but still sure. it works. A tree. Yeah, yeah. Uh, most definitely. And we've had a number of uh, of. Um, secondary schools, primary schools also approach us um, to where they can come and do hosted wow. tours. So, so it's something we'll definitely uh, definitely do um, this year. So any more, are you looking at other initiatives to reduce your carbon footprint, to you know, create a more greener world? Yeah, look, I mean, for a long time here at Fairmont Singapore and Twisted Top of Stanford, we have um, been big advocates of sustainability. So. If you look at uh, plastic, for example, we've taken out all single-use um, plastic from our Raffle City Convention Centre. Uh, we've taken out, uh, we've just done a renovation of the Fairmont Singapore, and we've taken out um, all plastic, single-use plastic in the guest rooms of the South Tower there, and we put filtered uh, water, hot and cold water, in the guest room. So not in the bathroom, but actually in the guest room, in the minibar. 
Uh, in the Swiss Hotel of Stanford, we've got rid of all the little amenity bottles and put pump action. You know, that's saving over 1.3 million bottles a year yes. um, that previously would have been going into the environment. So absolutely, we're doing doing things like that. Our, our goal, obviously, we've done the straws and all that. I mean, they're, they're basic things, but but uh, this year we'll continue on um, seeing what else we ideally want to reduce. Uh, actually, get rid of all single-use plastic. Mm -hmm. That's the goal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now back on the aquaponics. Um, you intend to grow that within the building? Is there a mm -hmm. space to kind of expand that operation? Absolutely. We we do have a few other areas, both indoor and out. Yep. Um, so. You know, once this this one settled down, we work out what's uh, what works and what doesn't work. Then most definitely we want to expand it. I mean, we're talking about September to now. It hasn't been a mm -hmm. long time in no. what you produce. Haven't yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's uh, it's quite remarkable, and yeah. how how quick it grows is, is fantastic. And you feel like do you feel like this is your little baby that you you've really mm -hmm. championed and nurturing now? Um, I love it. Look, I do love it, but. But the, I mean, it's important that I love it, but I, I love the fact that the, the chefs love it. Yeah. They've totally embraced it. Yeah. Uh, it's almost like it's their little baby now too. And, you know, they love taking people through to, to show them, to see it and, uh, and, sh and show it off. So uh, it's, it's something that we can be all proud of. And are you sharing this with the rest of your competitors? We're also mm -hmm. part of the sort of community. Everyone's trying to change the way people think, people do things. Mm -hmm. um, I, I kind of see um, this industry as um, friends and for all at the same time. Yeah. Most definitely. Yeah, absolutely. We, uh, we've shown a number of competitors through. Uh, I, I know of <coughs> two other hotels in Singapore that are looking at installation this year uh, and I'm sure we're, we're going to see more. Yeah. Yeah. So you can be the grandfather then? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much, Mark. This was lovely chatting with you. Uh, my and, pleasure. Uh, I'd like to see 458 acres, but meters, square meters tanks too next time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Very good. We'll work on it. Thank you. So we're here at the Grand Hyatt Singapore and we're here to discover how this hotel is playing its part in a more sustainable future. So right here is where all the check-in and check-out happens. And believe it or not, absolutely everything is done digitally. And what's more important, it is reducing paper consumption by up to 75%. Can you believe that? Other sustainability efforts include the reduction in the consumption of single-use plastic and migrating to things like uh, sugarcane straws. And what's more important, their efforts in reducing food waste. So I'm here with Chef Lucas Glanville to uncover how the Grand Hyatt is actually um, taking steps to reducing food waste. Lucas, what an innovative solution is uh, this food waste uh, management plant you've got. Um, are you guys one of the first ones in Singapore to establish this? Well, we, we believe we're the first hotel in the world to have this complete enclosed system that we have here. Wow. So um, I think many years ago when I started cooking, we didn't have waste in kitchens, it just didn't exist. And we used the animal, we use the entire animals, it was vegetables, we cook from season to season. Mm -hmm. However, evolution of the industry, a lot of things have changed over the years. Um, a lot of people entering the industry have a different expectation nowadays. So that skill level may have changed over the years and the understanding of product and ingredients. So that has what's ended up with a lot of food waste nowadays. So it's about how we manage it. And, and our vacuum waste system that we uh, built in, in Grand High Singapore um, is one of our solutions of minimising and, and, and utilising our food waste. Fantastic. So tell me a little bit about how this this system works. It's mind blowing how you can get like a thousand kilograms of food waste, and at the end result, it's five hundred grams. It's a bit grams like a science cost. project. Uh, we were fortunate uh, several years ago to do a major renovation in the hotel, mm -hmm. and we came across this piece of technology. And at the time, it was very aspirational. It's very expensive bit out of our league really. Uh, however, we spoke to industry, we spoke to the government, um, we spoke to a lot of consultants and we managed to uh, get an understanding of the expenses and the cost and we're fortunate enough to implement the system in our hotel. Fantastic. So tell me, how does it work? How does it work? I mean, I, I see a lot of pipes kind of yeah, running through the buildings, um, the basement. Yep. Um, how does it work? So there's two, two systems we have in the hotel. The first one transports food waste yep. from our kitchens where food waste is created and it transports it into our basement. So that's done under vacuum. Uh, so in the back of the house areas, so the dishwashing area where you'd normally have a rubbish bin, where the service team would come in maybe with their plates and they'd scrape the waste into there. Right. There we have what we call an inlet station. 
And the same with our chefs, they collect their food waste and that goes into the inlet station. So there's one in each kitchen. So we have nine of them in the hotel. Um, so the beauty of that is it creates more space in the kitchen. Uh, rubbish bins can actually do a lot of damage to kitchens. With uh, wheelie bins, moving them in and out of kitchens, they hit door frames, they, they, uh, uh, and they also don't last forever. Okay. Uh, plastic rubbish bins probably have a, a life of maybe one or two years before the wheels fall off or the lid or they get damaged. Uh, we save 55,000 rubbish bags a year. Wow. So over a thousand rubbish bags a week are used in a hotel of this size. So wow. you can imagine how many rubbish bags are used in Singapore on a daily basis Excellent. in all the hotels and restaurants. So huge saving with that. Uh, so the food waste goes into the inlet station and then under vacuum it gets transported down into our basement mm -hmm. um, and then it goes through a grinder and then this pork that comes out of out of the grind goes through a dewatering system. Okay. Now food's about 50% uh, water, so it gets reduced by about 50% there and then. It's, it's basically a screw, and we, and we screw the, 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 the water or the moisture out of the food, so then it's reduced by, by approximately 50%. Then we take that remaining 50% and put it into a silo, it's a bit like making a recipe. We yeah. need a certain amount of food waste before we can, we can turn it into fertilizer. Okay. Once we have 500 kilos, it gets transferred into the digester, and then the aerobic digestion, it gets turned into fertilizer in 24 hours. So that's done, it's an enzyme that we add to it. Right. Um, it goes inside a big, like a big mixing bowl, I suppose. It's a big, it's a tank and it's got arms in there that agitates it. Yeah. And it heats it up to about 82 degrees and we get the enzyme is in there as well. Okay. So it basically accelerates. Yeah. If you had a compost uh, heap in your back garden or, or, or wherever you make compost, what that happens in maybe six or nine months, we do that in 24 hours. That's so it's the same thing. So it heats it up, yeah. agitates it, and the enzyme uh, works for aerobic digestion and turns it into fertilizer. So it's a, it's, it's a super duper composter essentially. Right. Exactly, yeah. yeah, that's exactly what So do you use all, I mean, what are you doing with all that compost that you create? So we fertilizer? create, yeah, so we, we create around 200 kilos a day okay. of fertilizer. So we've got large grounds here in the hotel. Mm -hmm. Our hotel has uh, has lots of landscaping here. Yeah. So a lot of it goes into our into the grounds of the hotel. We also have a herb garden on the roof of our hotel. Okay. So right. a 600 square meter herb garden and a lot of the fertilizer goes there. Okay. And then any excess, we, we pass it back to the company. We have the digester, who we purchase the digester through and then they further process it and, and, it, and it gets sold into the market. I mean, that's a true sustainable process essentially, yeah. isn't it? You're basically turning something that had, had to go out of the uh, uh, of the hotel, you're keeping it within and you're making it. And that's what, that was our aim. We wanted yeah. to break the chain yeah. so none of our food waste went into landfill and that was our aim and, and we managed to achieve that. Yeah, that's wonderful, that's fantastic. Now tell me, um, I had a look at your menu before and there's a whole lot of write-up about you know all the different sort of, sort of uh, sustainable decisions you're making around food, creating food, where you, where you source your food, how you source your food. Um, is it something you think that's feeding through to um, uh, customers, guests? Sure, yeah. sure. I think when we started our journey on sustainability back in 2010, uh, when you mentioned that word sustainable, sustainability, it was a foreign word, mm -hmm. what does it mean? Mm -hmm. Everyone had their own version of, of what it meant. Mm -hmm. um, and we used that opportunity to define what that meant. And for us, we wanted to be independent. We didn't want it to be our version. Yeah. Because very often you talk to suppliers or, or you have an experience somewhere and it's their version of the truth right. and we didn't want that we wanted to be i suppose third party certified we wanted yep. someone else so all of our seafood uh comes from the marine stewardship council or aquaculture stewardship council we're chain of custody certified with them um we've looked at uh, all of our menus that we uh that we procure our, our, our food through our supplies we've done auditing with our suppliers right. to ensure they understand because we want to collaborate with them yeah we don't want to be the supplier against the hotel against right. the customer we want to work and collaborate with our with our suppliers and we find our customers are very engaged with that. So the more they understand about our products, where they come from, the more they uh, support us. I mean, essentially, look, you're creating a community, a community of educators, cons consumers understand, um, we're, we're more educated about what we're eating these days as well. And, um, and that's phenomenal. Yeah. Now tell me something, is there anything that cannot go into these? Uh, this, this, into this, the digester? Yes. Maybe large bones, you know, if you've got maybe a bone off a tomahawk steak. Oh, right. Um, that can be a bit tricky because there's sort of bends and turns in the pipe. So anything like that has to be sort of broken down. Okay. But anything that is organic or can be broken down can go in there. So some things take longer than others. Yeah. Like oyster shells can take a bit longer to break down. Okay. But within reason, anything that is organic can go wow. into can go into the digestive. So that will reduce your um, um, 
the, 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 the um, extraction of waste essentially or your rubbish essentially from the hotel. It's yeah. significant. Yeah. And also paper. We put a lot of paper and cardboard in there. So when we when we process it through the aerobic digestion, we need a certain level of moisture in there as well. So mm -hmm. even though a lot of the moisture's been uh, removed. We, uh, so we had paper in there to absorb any, any remaining moisture. So a lot of our cardboard goes in there, uh, paper napkins that we have wow. in our outlets as well. So there's a lot of other items that go in there as well to, to, to get uh, to recycle but as well. everything from the kitchen or other parts of the hotel as well? Well, other parts from, from guest rooms. If there's, if there's paper on cardboard come in the guest rooms, mm -hmm. that can go into the digester. Okay. Uh, from our restaurants, um, from deliveries. Um, if there's any cardboard that we accept during deliveries, that can go into the digester as well. So I can see there's a, um, a little funnel, all these little bins that's located, you mentioned eight or nine around the, yes. the building. Um, when do you know that there's enough in there, there's a thousand kilograms in there? It's fully computerized, it's, it's, ah. it's fully automated. Um, and there's, there's, a, there's a brain center down there, there's a, there's a big uh, server down there that, uh, that manages all that. So we know at any time how much waste is in the silo and then how much is in the digester. Yeah. So it's all measured, we know, we know what goes in and what comes out. Wonderful. Um, is there any one point where, you, where it's falling, you can't actually do it or because it... Because that's a, that's a good question. So when we, when we purchased it, we oversized the machine okay. for that exact point because if there was a, a, a breakdown or if there's a shortfall or we had an excess of waste, yeah. we can manage to use that on, on a daily basis. So there's no, uh, there's no holder. Okay. Yeah. Are you proud of this item? <laughs> well, I think the team, I mean, it's a real yeah. team effort. Yeah. And, and we're very fortunate. I mean, we had the support of the Singapore government. They were mm -hmm. very supportive. Mm -hmm. Our team here at Grand Hyatt Singapore, our owners were very supportive as well. So we're very fortunate. And do you think your your guests are, uh, are taking this on board and they're being um, more inclined to be aware of what we're doing to the environment and how we're treating it and sure. how we can do what we can do Absolutely. with it? I think years ago, maybe, maybe not so, but but as we move forward, more people are getting engaged with it. I think social media is a big driver, Robert. Absolutely. People are getting a bigger understanding of what's happening in the environment. Mm -hmm. And people want to be part of success, so they don't want to be part of the problem. So yeah. they want to know with their consumption, is it, is, it, is it creating benefit to the environment or is it becoming a negative? So initiatives like this, using sustainable products nice. um, and, and, and managing your waste effectively, um, is all a good news story and I think our guests appreciate it. And you think it's going to feed through to the rest of the industry and more hotels and other companies? Yeah, I mean we've had a lot of hotel companies come here to view it and we're happy to show mm -hmm. our competitors um, our achievements here because it's an industry, it's not it's not just our problem, it's everyone's problem. Absolutely. And I think as an industry, if we can all work together to, to solve these problems, the industry will be in a much better position. Wonderful. Thank you, Lucas. That was awesome. Thanks that was for your so time. Thing. It was a real eye opener to see businesses in Singapore take the lead in making this world a better place, you know, a more sustainable place. I thoroughly enjoyed shooting the series with you. And we learned so much about how Hospitality 4.0 is revolutionizing the kitchen, changing the ways we're doing things. And also, not just that, you know, the sustainable practices that hotels are taking to make a greener future.